Hey YouTube, it's Christian again. Um, I found another TV to work on. What we're looking at here is an Emerson 32 inch LCD TV uh, model LC320EM82. Um, I picked this TV, one because I got it really cheap on Craigslist, bought it for 40 bucks, and two, um, it's a pretty, I would think it's a pretty popular TV. When me and my wife were shopping for TVs a couple years ago, this is one that I kept coming back to because it sells at Walmart and they had done a price drop on it and were selling it for like 350 bucks and they still sell it at Walmart to this day but <clears throat> what happens is the TV when you turn it on it'll power on for a second and you can see down here it says digital television then it'll turn right back off with the red standby light um, after doing a little bit of research the biggest problem with this TV, and not only this TV, but for Sylvania, 32-inch TVs, uh, model LC320EM82, LC320EM82S, and then the LD320SS8, um, is that the inverter board goes bad right after about a year of service. So um, I had the same thing. I bought this from a, a guy locally. Uh, he even had the receipt for it. It was like... A year and four months old and it's, it just quit working um, so I figured this would be a pretty common problem um, I did some research and found out that it was an inverter board uh, found an inverter board brand new on eBay for about 59 bucks and I'll provide uh, the uh, link in the sidebar with the, uh, the guys information on eBay so if you guys have this TV and want to buy an inverter board um, go to him quick shipping I ordered it on Monday, today's Wednesday, and I got it. So we're going to open this up, and I'm going to do a quick video on replacing the inverter board. Um, stay tuned. Okay, the back panel is pretty easy to take off. What you have is you have 10 perimeter screws that go around the perimeter here. Then you have four screws right here that hold the base plate on. Then you have four screws that have to come out here. That would be for, like, if you had a wall mount to... Uh, you know, some type of wall mount system there. Uh, before you take this off, you want to pull this base plate out. Then, I can show you something real quick here. The two top screws, if you can see that or not, right there and there, those actually, not only they hold this, help hold this back plate on, but they help hold the um, top panel, um, top instrument panel on. So you want to make sure you get those screws completely loosened up. If not, then it, it you as you pull up, you won't even know it, but you might pull the uh, the wires out for the uh, instrument panel. So I'm going to take this back panel off, and we'll take a look at the inverter board. All right, let's get this back off. Now yours may take a little wiggle to get it off, considering it's probably never been taken off before. <clears throat> now let's take a look. Here's the inverter board here off to the far side. It's the one where the plug-in is going to be plugged into. So you got your plug-in, goes up here and over into the inverter board right there. Okay now taking this board out is actually going to be relatively easy. On the left and right side you have three different screws to pull out there. So a total of six screws all together. Then you have six plugs for your uh, fluorescent tubes, which just pop right out, real simple, like so. Like so. Then you have a power line that goes to your soundboard, right there, that pops out. Now, the trickiest part of this is probably pulling out the line that goes to the uh, your video board. To do that, you have to take the screws out of this brace right here. That's It's the brace for like the wall mount. And there's four screws. Two at the bottom. Two at the top. Now, when you loosen those and you try to pull it out, you might notice that it doesn't come out. There's some, like, type of, some type of tape here that you need to pull up first and it's really sticky so try to pull that up before you even try to pull this brace off otherwise you'll be tugging and pulling at not knowing what's going on and that brace just pops right off take that off cut to the side 
Now, this is kind of difficult to get off. Um, I, I don't have an HD camera, so it doesn't really focus in well. But that's where a little screwdriver is going to come in handy. Because what you're going to have to do is wedge the screwdriver between the little clips that hold this on. Just wedge it in there and kind of pry this side up a little bit. And then just do the other side, and then it'll slide right out. Like so. That's it. Back up a little bit so you can kind of see it a little bit better. That's all it is. Uh, the great thing about doing this is that you're not going to have to solder anything at all, which is nice. It's just basically you unscrew the board, unplug it, pull it out, and stick the new one in. But you can see here, basically you want to stick your little screwdriver or whatever you got just in between these two clips that hold that wire on. Now over here, I've got my new inverter board. It doesn't look a whole lot different. Uh, the one thing you'll notice if you get the same is that uh, this wire here is actually still PCB board. So you basically just have to grab that and very gently just break that away. You'll see it's connected with, just kind of connected right down there. If you can see it, break that away and then you can plug it in. So I'm going to pull this old one out here and uh, put the new one in and I'll be back. Okay, well I got the new board in place and screwed it down. So really all I've got to do now is just snap these power supplies in for the fluorescent tubes. Really, really easy to just clip right in place. Okay, and then the power supply for the soundboard. Clips right in place. Now, this is the tricky one because this aftermarket board that I bought, uh, the cord is a little bit shorter. So um, I had to kind of maneuver it up there and bend it into place. You can see here, it just not nearly as long but I was able to kind of maneuver it and get it in there and should be able to push it down and yep clicks right in place and I believe I got everything in place this power cord I mean it is an exact fit goes right down here slides right into this little slides right into this little uh, clip right here perfect fit so I'm gonna get everything put back together and turn it on and see how it works. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Let's power it on and see if it works. Okay, there it goes. Stays on. Um, I can select my uh, input. All right, pretty easy fix. Um, I know this isn't as isn't as cheap as the uh, TV I repaired previously, you know, with the $10 capacitors. But for $60, bucks, um, and you don't have to solder anything or do anything like that, pretty easy fix. Bought the TV for $40. Bucks, bought the inverter board for $59, which I'll leave a, uh, a link in the sidebar for the guy that I bought it uh, from. He's on eBay. Um, quick shipping, you know. I got it in like two or three days. Um, but for 100 bucks, I got a TV. And if you're out there and you've got this TV and it, it's a year down the road and you know it's not working for you, rather than go out and buy the same TV or a similar TV for 350, 400 bucks, um, just grab an inverter board, stick it in, and have a cheap, easy repair for about $60. Um, I'll go ahead and post a, a follow-up video once I get this hooked up. You know, just for video, just to see what the uh, uh, video quality is on this TV and uh, please uh, feel free to subscribe rate and uh, post comments if you guys have any questions I want to do some more TVs like this uh, you know pretty common TVs with common problems if you guys have any requests at all just email me or post a comment below of the model number of TV that you want to see repaired and I'll uh, I'm kinda of dependent on Craigslist you know and what I see locally so if I can find it locally and pick it up cheap then I'll go ahead and do a video of the repair if you guys have any questions, let me know. Thanks a lot.